Hi everyone, my name is Francis Waitaka. Um, today is uh, Thursday and I'll be answering your digital marketing questions every Thursday. Uh, I introduced this webinar last week where we covered uh, uh, some of the things that you can improve on your business uh, to help uh, your business grow. So today I'll be answering the questions that you guys have sent and allow me to uh, share my screen so that you can see the questions that have come in and I will answer them in a more comprehensive way. Uh, I've taken a few questions so that I take more time to uh, respond to them. So as I've said, uh, the name of the webinar is uh, Atomic Growth, which we focus on the tiny and small improvements that you can make for your business to help uh, you grow. So, um, so the questions uh, have come in and I want to respond uh, the first question, we're going to get it from uh, Wanjiru, who is a CEO of a retail business. And she asks, many of my friends who run online businesses have been complaining that their ads are not performing both on IG and Facebook. Is there a reason behind it or what is it they are doing wrong? So this is a question that has come up uh, quite a number of times. Um, and I want to address it because it's an issue that is affecting a lot of businesses where uh, you run ads online and they don't perform, or you get leads and they are not quality leads. So let's look at uh, the responses that I've been able to uh, come up with. Um, the first one is, uh, to be honest, when Facebook and Instagram started, uh, everything was doing well and uh, there was a lot of engagement, but the algorithms that Facebook introduced definitely has affected uh, the way people engage with content on social media. And um, there are, they, there's a reason, of course, the fact that uh, consumers also have shifted their attention from just uh, depending on Facebook and Instagram, and they have moved into other channels like YouTube and TikTok. I look at the trends on TikTok in Kenya, there's a lot of engaging content on TikTok, and uh, there's no reason why. Uh, young people, for example, the creatives, the people who are good at entertaining and, you know, having fun, uh, you know, they're finding uh, TikTok a very valuable uh, source of information and entertainment value. So that's one of the reasons. Of course, algorithms uh, is an issue that has uh, made sure that you only see the best content on your Facebook feed. Or when you go to Instagram, you're not seeing the latest content. You're seeing the, the, the most uh, trending content. And this has affected many channels, even Twitter and LinkedIn. They are now driven by uh, algorithms and that affects the engagement level of social media platforms. Uh, but we of course agree that YouTube has taken uh, uh, people's attention, even from TV and other channels uh, and TikTok as well. The other reason why a lot of marketing efforts end up uh, in failure is because of poor marketing strategy. Um, and I have been developing marketing strategies for the last 10 years. And I can tell you, uh, you may go to a business or an organization and you hear they are just talking about product, 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 uh, with very little concern or interest in really trying to understand what about the customer? What does the customer want? What is What are the needs of the customers? And what can we do to ensure we are the best in satisfying uh, those needs? So um, if you're struggling with uh, developing a marketing strategy, you can reach out to me. Uh, I can support you in developing a marketing strategy. Uh, that it works, but also a marketing strategy is uh, not good. It may be good on paper, yes, but it's not good as long as it has not been tested and it is not focused on addressing the needs of the customer. So, but if your strategy is geared towards addressing the needs of your customers, what are their challenges? What are their pain points? What are their frustrations? Uh, you are on the right path if you start a marketing strategy with the customer. Start with the customer and end with the customer. But when you start focusing on the product, uh, you just talk about your product, how good your product is, you lose the conversation. And when you go to market, you realize uh, customers are not responding because there's very little 
your product is uh, doing to address their needs. The third um, answer that I can give uh, to Wanjiru is uh, ads are not an end by themselves. They are a means to an end. And this is something that I come across a lot of times where uh, someone thinks, oh, we will just create an ad. We just need maybe 15,000 every month and Facebook will do the magic. The truth is there isn't a magic wand. There isn't a magic bullet that can solve your business problems. You know, the, the problems that you have in your business will require tiny and improve, uh, uh, tiny and consistent improvements in your business. I will give you a very good example. Um, I know of someone who spent 80,000 on Facebook and didn't get anything out of it because he just used to give a media buying guy, you know, here is 80,000, run the ads. And then at, after 30 days, the young man comes and says, uh, I want my payment, you know, here is the invoice, can you pay me? And he was not getting any value from the ads because uh, ads are not an end by themselves. You have to ensure that you are doing some other things well in your business. For example, um, how good is your product? How good is your product in relation to your competitors? How compelling is your product? How compelling is your offer in relation to the competitors? There's also the issue of distribution. I remember of someone who um, we tried to market uh, their products online in an e-commerce uh, in, in an e-commerce campaign. We did a campaign for them. Uh, it was a new product that was coming in the market, but uh, we figured out later that it turns it turned out there wasn't a distribution of the product. As in, we run ads on social media, yes, we do a very good website, yes, but when customers go to the physical retail shops, because this was a retail uh, brand, they couldn't find the product. So when they were calling us and saying, you guys, we find you everyone on social media, but um, we can't find your product. So there are a lot of tiny small bits that of your business that you need to look at that can affect the performance of your ads. Uh, the other thing is a great customer experience. For example, I remember of a business that was uh, actually a salon. It, I think it, it still exists. And uh, they were doing very badly in terms of sales and business performance. And uh, I really wanted to, before we started, I told uh, the business owner, I really want to come and interact with you and see and understand your business first. When I went there, I discovered there were a lot of problems in terms of employees coming late, the office being opened very late, uh, the staff not being committed to their work and all that affects the customer experience and when a customer comes and finds there are no employees the place is shut it has not been opened by 10 a.m they are coming at 11 and it is the owner of a business that is opening um, uh, you know the business instead of uh, the person who has the key then that becomes a problem so you need to look at the tiny small issues that your business may be having uh, before you now go online. In other words, put your house in order. Put your house in order. Ensure you have a great product. Ensure you have trained your team on customer experience. Do your employees understand your product? Or even sometimes you may find a customer understands your product or service more uh, than the employee who is selling it. So, and that can affect the performance of the ad. So, if you have ensured your in-house, your house, You've done your in-house work properly then we can talk about the right strategy that can help you to grow online um, the fourth issue that i can address on the why online uh, ads may not be performing well is um, this is something that is very personal to me i came to discover uh, after a very long time that it turns out Anybody who says they are in the business of selling online, actually, they are in the business of building trust. And when I come to your Instagram or your Facebook or your website or any other digital channel that you have, and this is the first time I'm interacting with you, I'm looking for signals, trust elements, trust signals that I can look at and say, oh, this is the right uh, person who I can buy from, or this is the best company that can give me this offer or this service. So there's a lot of need for you to demonstrate through evidence. Show me the evidence. Where is the evidence that you're the best 
in your offering, in your service, in your category, in your industry, because you will find if you're selling a product, there will be hundred, a thousand other companies doing the same thing. So what sets your business apart? What differentiates your business from uh, your competitors? You have to show evidence. You have to, uh, and this evidence include things like uh, testimonials, reviews, ratings, and uh, any certifications or credentials that you have. If you are a consultant, what are the credentials that you have? What have you done that can make me to say yes to your offer? Uh, the fifth issue I want to address here is uh, the issue of a website actually is a tool for building trust. And this is something that I also learned after a very long time that, um, well, you can have a Facebook, have an Instagram, that's good. But when you have a website, if you have a website where you're selling products, where someone can go there and interact with your product, look at the benefits, look at the features, look at the pricing, it has a lot of value. And this is uh, also something that we have learned at Digital for Africa, where we get a lot of customers uh, who are finding us online. Even today in the morning, we got a, a top brand looking um, at our website and they called and they said, we want a quotation for uh, this kind of a service. And they found us online. We don't know them, and it's a big corporate. We don't know them, we've never interacted with them. They just went online and discovered uh, our website. So this is something that I can encourage anyone. If you have a long-term view of your business, you feel you can do your business for 10, 20 years to come. Building a website that has rich content, that has rich information, can be a competitive advantage. It can set you apart. If there are five businesses uh, in the same area, uh, but one has a website. The one has a website has a competitive advantage over the other person or the other competitors who don't have one. Because your website, I normally say your website is your, is, is works for you 24-7. Even when you are asleep, your website is working. And remember, you don't have control of Facebook. They can change algorithms anytime. You don't have control of YouTube. Your YouTube channel can be deleted for copyright infringement or, or any mistakes that you can make. But you have control of your website. You can say anything, anyhow. You can present videos, you can present photos, you can change and tweak and place uh, the products, uh, you know, in the right place without anybody restricting you. But you don't have that kind of control on Instagram or Facebook where uh, a slight change in algorithm can make you, uh, can hit your business out and uh, find challenges. So. This is something I would really encourage you. If you have a long-term view, but if you have a short-term view, you're not looking at your business 20 years to come, then that's why a website may not be useful for you because um, maybe you're not looking to last, but if you're here to last, you're in business to last, I would encourage you to have a website and ensure that your website has rich content, rich improvements, uh, rich, um, uh, and make tiny, small improvements on a daily basis. This is something that we blend ourselves. We keep on improving our website. Even right now, as I talk, we are almost launching a new website that is different, that is much more rich in terms of information. Uh, the other thing I wanted to address is the issue of something that I have seen as a new trend, where people are now actually selling. Uh, they, are, they are now, marketing has shifted from just selling and talking about product, product, promotion, promotion, we are here, we are the best, here is the price. And now people are actually having conversations. The new trend in marketing, it's conversational marketing, where you go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram, you go live on, uh, on Twitter, or any other channel that works for you, and talk about things that affects your customer, your audience. Have a conversation. You know, you can bring an expert, have a conversation. You can also be an expert yourself. Have a conversation about the issues, the problems. Or sometimes you could record the product, show the product, how it works, the features, why it is different. Uh, this is something that I have, uh, this is a new trend I have seen. It's very, very common now, even here in Kenya, but even more so in China, where China is one of the leading uh, uh, markets of e-commerce in the world. And they are doing it right because they are highly focused on live content, where you find young students uh, recording themselves and showcasing their products and selling live. 
uh, on different channels. So I would encourage you to consider going live. You know, take your foot, your phone, record yourself. You know, show us your product, demonstrate how it works, and give us a reason why we should buy. Uh, I have seen, for example, uh, the CEO of Optiven. This is a real estate firm in Kenya. He is called George, and I have seen he has actually gotten this right. Every time I go to my Facebook, I see his live. He's talking about investments, real estate, ideas about growing yourself, growing your career, getting passive income. And he is doing right. And this is a way to do marketing. You don't have to focus on just products and promotions. You can have a conversation. You can have a conversation about your products and services. And people will pay attention because people hate being marketed. But when you have a conversation, people will pay attention. I've also created a checklist that can guide you if you are doing online marketing and you're asking yourself, um, can you give me a framework or a method? So here is a framework, a checklist that focuses on some of the important things that you should be addressing when you're doing online marketing. Uh, it has many, uh, a number of things, product, the copy of the, the art, the creative, the design, the visuals, uh, the videos whether you should use an influencer, uh, social proof, the targeting options that you use. Are you targeting the whole of Kenya, people in Lamu and Mombasa and other places where your business does not have the capacity to deliver the product and yet you could be running your ad specifically on a specific location where you know the people uh, are, you are able to deliver the experience. Facebook pixel, uh, something important that you need to activate on Facebook so that Facebook tracks people who visit your website and you can retarget them. Uh, the user experience on your website, and I've also talked about distribution. The second question that I got, which I want to address, and uh, this came from Ken from Facebook, uh, he's saying, uh, I, uh, is there a free website or platform where digital managers can find consumer reports, specifically on digital advertising and social media consumption? The truth, Ken, is there are very many. One of them is the digital uh, report that is normally published by We Are Social and Hootsuite. You can find the URL there, the URL there, but I can, you can also Google for it. Just search for Digital 2021 Kenya Report and you will find trends, insights on what uh, people are doing online, e-commerce, social media, all the stats about the internet. Uh, you will find them there. Also, there is this report by TIFA and RealForge Kenya media landscape, if you want to understand media, how Kenyans consume media, which TV station is leading uh, and doing a better job, you will find uh, a TIFA report is very, very good. If you go to the website, look for the latest, and you will be really informed. But also, I wanted to tell you, some of the best tools for understanding consumer behavior are actually available for free, and they are owned by Google. For example, Google Analytics rich information about what people are doing on your website, where they came from, and who are they, freely available from Facebook. Google Keyword Planner gives you ideas of what people are searching online in regards to your product or services or in your category or in your industry. Google My Business, a free platform where you can create a page and promote your business without even having a website. There is also Google Search Console that has a rich insight on how your website is performing. You know, whether you have errors or not, where there are broken links or not, you can only find them on Google Search Console. And then there's also Google Trends that is freely available to show you the trends on, uh, you know, uh, what people are talking about in Kenya and in which places of Kenya. So if you come for a masterclass, I can teach you more in detail about how to use this report. So those are the questions that have come today. So. I really appreciate you for coming and I look forward to having another conversation with you next week about your digital marketing uh, problems and challenges and aspirations and goals. And thank you very much uh, for joining us. So see you on Tuesday. So remember Tuesdays is a case study of the week. Then on Thursdays, we answer your questions. So thank you very, very much.